in the past few weeks, if you happen to open a newspaper, turn on a news station, or even scroll through social media, you may have noticed the term net neutrality popping up everywhere. Net neutrality started hitting the front pages on November 21st, when the Federal Communications Commission announced its plan to repeal net neutrality. In order to even begin to dive into what this might mean, I first needed a simple working definition of net neutrality. So I sat down with Stefan Ward-Wheaton from Free Press, an organization based in Northampton that has worked on issues of media access and internet regulations for the past 14 years. A net neutrality is a principle that you should be able to, as an internet user, visit and access any site or any service on the internet on an even playing field. In 2015, the big victory that we got was to get uh, the internet and internet communication and commerce classified under something called Title II. It ensured that ISPs, internet service providers like Verizon, AT&T, they have to provide you with um, a data rate and with internet access um, across the board. You pay one price and you get the whole internet, essentially. That's what's under threat if these rules get rolled back. Federal policy on internet regulations can change every few years with the appointment of a new chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, who is appointed by the president. To learn a bit more, I called up former chairman of the FCC, Tom Wheeler, who was responsible for passing net neutrality in 2015. When Chairman Pai was a commissioner when I was chairman, he opposed uh, everything that I did uh, on the open internet. And when uh, he became chairman, he announced he was going to take a weed whacker, that was his term, take a weed whacker to uh, the policy. And um, I just think he's following through on his commitment to do so. The FCC will vote on whether or not to repeal net neutrality on December 14th. It is likely to pass the Republican majority FCC, and it is in line with the deregulatory efforts by President Donald Trump. Experts say that this could have a significant impact on Americans' everyday experience of the internet. You could see essentially um, a, a scenario where you have you have um, you have to pay higher and higher tiers of pricing to access more and more of the internet, or to access Facebook. Um, Instagram, Snapchat, other social media sites. Although my interview requests to Verizon, Comcast, Charter, and AT&T were denied, I was sent statements applauding the move to repeal net neutrality regulations on the basis that removing the regulations will increase innovation and claiming a commitment to not blocking or discriminating against content. I understand what they put out for PR purposes, but it's interesting what their actions and then what they told the court suggest about really what's going to happen. How do you start up a new innovative company? If Comcast, for instance, says to the company you're competing against, well, I'll tell you what, if you'll pay us some extra money, we'll prioritize your service, and this new startup won't be able to, uh, to have as good a service. Even if the net neutrality regulations are repealed, Free Press says that their fight will not end. We're fighting right now to get Congress to take action on the issue. We have a strategy in the courts that we can uh, contest and appeal this decision because it affects literally everyone who's ever used the internet, though they may not know it. I'm Elena Fragamini. Thanks for watching.